Tragic news affecting Boston Celtics star Isaiah Thomas. His sister was killed in a one-car accident early Saturday morning, according to Washington State Police. She was 22 years old. And a moment of silence here at the Garden and tears streaming down the face of Isaiah Thomas. He will play, and moments ago, he was introduced to the home crowd. And Bradley had Lopez closing out on gives it right had a very difficult stretch, but you continue to perform at a high level. How are you able to get to your game? Basketball, when I'm on the court, it just keeps me going. So I do everything for my sister now, and that's all I can, that's all I can do. Thank you. Man, you got to respect Isaiah for that. But that's only one of our 10 most emotional moments. One shot made an NBA legend cry. Another player was forced to play an NBA game after their family was burned alive. But before we get to that, at number 9, Kevin Durant's emotional moment came when he suffered a life-threatening injury. Even though he had just gotten hurt a few weeks before, Kevin was being pressured by the entire world to get back on the court too soon. Any way that he could be out on the court healthy enough to play, I'm not concerned. I don't care about rust. I, I could care less. If Kevin Durant is healthy enough to, I'm talking about to play without pain. Oh, I can expect a lot. And obviously Kevin heard all this talk, so with his team just one loss away from losing a championship, he announced his return, but he'd regret that decision soon. Curry to Durant, here's his first shot, and it looks pretty good there, rattles home a three. Durant tries another three, two for two is Kevin Durant. Baca trying to stay with Durant, knocks it away and Durant slipping. Durant goes down holding his leg, and Durant grabbing that right leg. I don't like to hear the fans yeah, cheering. I'm, I'm surprised by that, and, and the players are telling him not to be doing that. Kevin suffered one of the worst injuries possible, something that's ended careers before him, a torn Achilles. So when he couldn't even walk off the court without help, and the opposing fans were cheering on his downfall, they must not have realized that Kevin risked the rest of his career for that one game. And that's why the situation had the entire Warriors organization emotional. He sacrificed his body for us, and I just feel bad for him. So, well, uh, I got a lot of emotions right now. It's crazy. To see him go down, you know, it took the life out of us for sure. You know, we're all praying for him, and we're going to be by his side no matter what the situation is. We're all going to be right by his side there with him. <sighs> Kevin had a, it's, it's an Achilles injury. He was cleared to play tonight. That, that was a collaborative decision. I don't believe there's anybody to blame, and um, if you have to, you can blame me. Man, you gotta respect Kevin for putting his team over his own life, but his injury wasn't as bad as number eight, where a player was forced to watch his family die in a house fire. March 25th, 2018, I was in a house fire and I had, uh, I had escaped, but I lost my grandmother and my baby brother. As a junior in high school, he's watching the Elite Eight. Realize that the fire is in his own house. He tried two windows. The third window finally popped open. He wanted to go back in, could not because of the heat, so he had to jump out. Tori's Patel attended. The doctor said I wasn't going to play basketball ever again. I mean, I still get the chills still. The grandma, Faye, basically saved the life of the three-month-old cousins. It was unimaginable. What he went through, what he endured, and what he persevered through, he kept going and he didn't give up when all the odds was against him. On my shoulder, I got my baby brother and my grandmother. That's who I play for. Uh, I'm sorry. That's just been my why and my joy and my passion. The reason why I go so hard and wanting to wake up every day with a smile on my face because I'm not supposed to be here right now. Like I was 0.2 seconds away from not being here, so I have every reason to smile. But all right, not all emotional moments are that serious. At number seven, one fan got so emotional, he got kicked out of an NBA game by the police. Dude really got arrested, and the mascot started it. Well, it ain't actually like that fan could have made the NBA or anything. 
Because at number six, when people actually make the NBA, it leads to some of the most emotional interviews in NBA history. I, I don't know what to say. I didn't think I'd be in this position. I dreamed about this since I was four. I just thank God for it. Why is it so important to you to be putting on that jersey? I'm from New York. That's why it's important. Me repping my city, is, it's amazing. It means a lot for both of us. We both know what I've been through. I don't want to get a little emotional up here, man, but I just want to thank him for everything he done for me. Tell me about these tears. It's just com com accomplishing something that I've been dreaming of my whole life. Hearing that sentence from Adam Silver, I've dreamed of it so much that I, I got to cry, man. But as emotional as players get at the draft, that's just the beginning of the hype they'll have to live up to. And at number five, LeBron James didn't just live up to his hype. He set one of the most legendary records in sports history and got emotional in front of his family and millions of people. Among all your accomplishments, where will the scoring title rank? The scoring record was never, ever even thought of in my head because I've always been a pass first guy. I've always loved seeing the success of my teammates. It's never been a, a goal of mine. Hey, Brown, when you break the record, you gonna cry? Huh? Oh, the scoring record? Yeah, the scoring record. You don't think so? Now, even though LeBron claimed that scoring wasn't his priority, on February 12th, 2023, LeBron walked in just 36 points away from becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer. And well... Work. Jay Will switches on to LeBron. Here's a three on its way. There you go. James, little sidestep, he's fouled! And another one is down to the schedule. LeBron fires a three. That was Westbrook finds James. James lays it in! And here's James on the line for Westbrook. Walker finds James. James lays it in! Looking for James, he's got it. Coming to the end of the third quarter. LeBron James, a shot in history. to the Laker faithful. Um, you guys are one of a kind. Man, everybody that's ever been a part of this run with me the last 20 years, 20 plus years, I just want to say I thank you so much because I wouldn't be me without y'all. I, I would never ever in a million years uh, dreamt this even better than what it is tonight. So, fuck, man, thank you guys. Now, all right, LeBron shot might have made NBA history, but at number four, Kawhi Leonard shot made a grown man cry. It's off to Leonard, defended by Simmons. Is this the dagger? Oh! Game! Series! Toronto is one! The Raptors get the shot to go. Ten. Like, imagine a guy who laughs like this, <laughs> making you cry. But all right, all jokes aside, Embiid was only diagnosed with some hurt feelings. And number three, Tony Snell's emotional moment came after he was diagnosed with a life-changing disorder. Tony always knew he was different, but he kept it a secret because most people treated him like a joke. From fans clowning his embarrassing stat lines and turning him into a meme, to having his own teammates clown him for how he dressed, he said Tony Snell was the worst dressed player he's ever 100%. seen. 100%. My fault. <laughs> All along, Tony was just trying to be him, but nobody knew what he was actually suffering from. Last year, Tony and his wife Ashley noticed their little boy Carter was starting to miss some developmental milestones. By 18 months, he still wasn't talking. He was doing a lot of stimming. So it's like this kind of movement always has to have six or seven toys in his hands. Usually one is always a basketball. So the doctor was like, well, we need to get him tested for autism. So he gets diagnosed. At what point did you think, you know what? I can relate to some of this as well. Maybe I should get checked out. Growing up, always been alone. I just couldn't connect with people on the personal side of things. And I'm like, you know what? If he's diagnosed, then I think I am too. So that, that gave me the courage to go get checked up. And after that heartbreaking announcement, Tony's story made headlines. 
But in number two, Jamal Murray's emotional moment came from a worldwide controversy. Once the world found out about the insane tragedies when cops wrongfully killed Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, nobody was more affected by this than Jamal Murray. Not only was he upset, he felt like he needed to spread awareness by representing the people that were lost with some custom shoes. And once he wore them to his next game, he put the world on notice. Murray goes, shot clock at three, no little floater is good. Murray, three-pointer is up, and it's good. Jamal Murray again. Step back three on the way, and he's got another one. Jokic finding Murray. Murray, does he got another one in him? Oh, you bet he does, and that might be the dagger. Wow. 50 points and the win. While wearing the shoes, Jamal had the best game of his career, so of course he got emotional. In life, you find things that hold value to you, and things to fight for. We found something worth fighting for as an NBA, as a collective unit. And I use these shoes as a, as a symbol to me to keep fighting all around the world. You have a picture of George Floyd on your right shoe here. You got Bianca Taylor. Why, why has this been so personal for you, Jamal? Because it's not just in America, it happens everywhere. And uh, it's not going to take one night. And we've been doing trying to fight for 400 years. But these shoes give me life, they help me find strength to keep fighting this world. But in number one, one of the most emotional moments in NBA history came after a player lost not only his teammate, but his best friend. None of Kobe Bryant's teammates ever got as close to him as Pau Gasol did. Once Pau joined the Lakers, these two instantly bonded and formed enough chemistry on the court to eventually win a championship. But it was deeper than just basketball. Off the court, Pau became part of Kobe's family when all of Kobe's kids began considering Pau their uncle. So it seemed like the friendship between the guys would last forever until. Good afternoon from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. I still didn't want to believe it. You still thought that Kobe could have gotten out of that accident by his own feet. You know, he was that invincible. In the world of grief that followed, Pau and his wife, Catherine, knew what his brother would want him to do. We wanted to be close to Vanessa and the kids. Being there for him as much as possible. Pau sent flowers for Kobe and Vanessa's 19th wedding anniversary and a cake for Gianna's birthday in May. Then in September, Pau became a father for the first time. My daughter's full name is Elizabeth Gianna Gasol. To have Gianna's name, remembering her and having her present, it represents so much. I'm just gonna try to be a good father to my daughter, a good uncle to his daughters, a good brother to his wife. So after Pau did all of that for Kobe's family, and cause of the legacy that him and Kobe created together, the Lakers honored Pau with a night that even Kobe would have been proud of. It is my honor to introduce my dear friend Pau tonight. Pau was special to Kobe as a teammate, as a man, and as a friend. Pablo, Kobe predicted you and he would be together in the rafters. Here's a little video I want you to watch. There's no debate. I mean, how when he retires, he will have his number in the rafters next to mine. Uh, the reality is I don't win those championships without Pau. And I really look forward to the day where he's there giving his speech at, at center court. So it's going to be an awesome night. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Turn your attention to the rafters as we welcome our 12th member of Laker Legends. Join us right now in unveiling Pau Gasol's number 16 in 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome the newest Laker legend, Pau Gasol. Thank you. Thank you so much. What, a, what an unbelievable feeling. What an unbelievable honor. I'll start with to thank Vanessa. Thank you so much for the video, for the introduction. Thank you for being here. I love you, sister. I'm proud to be your brother. I'm proud to be an uncle to your lovely girls. Man, I'm just overwhelmed to see all the faces here, all of you. Just want to say thank you for making me feel so special. It's really been my honor to wear this jersey, to play for this franchise, to help this team, to contribute to this city. 
It really has. So I thank you. But I can't go on without talking about the person in the face that I don't see. The brother that elevated me, inspired me, challenged me to be a better player, just to be a better man overall. I miss him so much, like many of us do. I love him. I wish he was here with Gigi. I really do. Uh, but I think he'll be proud. And he was looking forward to this moment. So I love you, brother. Fue mi hermano y siempre, siempre será mi hermano.